Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are an existing subscriber, sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can also share and like this video. In this video, I'll be talking about how to prepare scholarship application documents for master's and PhD application. Some of these documents are your statement of purpose, SOP, personal statements, transcripts, WES evaluation, standardized tests or scholarship tests, code email, and so on. At the end of this video, you will be able to write a or prepare these documents very easily with a touch of creativity you will also enjoy some of the documents that some of my mentee has prepared that has earned them a fully funded scholarship in the u.s canada and some of the schools in europe so i will share some of these documents slightly student of purpose motivational letter code email and so on that has helped them to get fully funded uh, scholarship to graduate school Please, I will reiterate, don't copy and paste some of these samples. They are just there for, for you as a guide. And I need to tell you that graduate school normally run plagiarism check on this document. And if they found you one thing, you have nailed and nailed yourself. Please, learn to write. All they want to test with this document mm. is your mm. ability to write essay. At In this video, how to prepare master's and PhD application documents for full scholarship. Your SOP, your statement of purpose, reference letter, academic CV, and so on. The major components of your application are your research interests, your transcripts, your statement of purpose, your academic CV, and your standardized test. These five uh, components, together with your recommendation letter, code email, and personal statements, uh all together called documentation for scholarship application so the following are the documents that you will require for your application definitely you will require your international passports so international passports is required for some schools during the application your undergraduate results whether with your distinction for class or upper credit or lower credit i can tell you you can get a fully funded scholarship into the US, Canada, or some schools in Europe from experience. So, your transcripts, very, very important. The school will require you, or most schools abroad will require you to send your transcripts, that is the unofficial transcripts, the one you would get by hand from your school. So, you can always use this as a, an application document. So, the school can process your application with this unofficial transcript and uh, all you need is to apply for your transcript, get it by hand and upload it to the institution. So later they would call for the official transcript when they have decided with this unofficial transcript. So the next item is very optional for most schools. So and that is West evaluation. So having west evaluation don't forget might also boost your chance especially if you are a fresh graduate if you have no experience and probably your cgpa is somewhat low because experience has shown that if you have cgpa like 2.9 something 3.4 something by the time you will do your west evaluation you realize that you would have crossed that very border 2.9 might become 3. Point something your 2.4 something might become 3.5 something and your and so on so it's usually we found that found out that the cgpa would eventually be added in a way so in those instances you are fresh from school you have no strong experience and uh, your cgpa is low and Sometimes some schools will require that you use West evaluation. Sometimes some school will require, but most times it is not a serious requirement. So to do your West evaluation, you go to West official website www.wes.org. And don't forget, if you are an HND graduate, you would send your HND and ND transcripts to the West uh, World Educational Service. 
Uh, we also have uh, other evaluating bodies such as EC and the likes, but where's is their service is easier, faster, and more reliable. So you have to send the transcript through your school and uh, you ensure proper monitoring. I can tell you that it doesn't take worse more than two weeks to carry out your evaluation. The delay that most people have experienced is due to their institution monitoring uh, to acknowledge a worse response back to school. All those things delay the process. Meaning, if you want to do your worst evaluation, you need to be on top of the game and monitor it for quick results. So the type of uh, worst evaluation that we have, so you have to take note of this. We have a course by course evaluation. We have document by document evaluation and you have professional experience in for the sake of this uh, application or scholarship application, school application, you need course by course evaluation. So you have to send, the school will send all your grades. It states the period, the credit hours, the grades that you obtain in those courses, the degrees, overall academic performance, all these will be shown in your transcript. So the United States typically uses semester credits and the grade point average CGPA on a scale of 4.0 is usually used. The cost of best evaluation is around $205. And obviously, this is not inclusive of your transcript uh, application from your institution. So different institution has got their cost of a uh, transcript evaluation. And uh, during the application, you when you fill worst uh, request form, a number will be quoted which you would fill and uh, give to your institution that's a reference number so somewhat like your matric number so to say so your recommendation letter hmm. having a good reference letter usually have a very great impact to your admission process so the admission committee it helps them to have a very good insight into you and your application so for most schools the, ref the reference letter or recommendation letter is a compulsory part of the application process so and i can tell you if you want to write uh, or get recommendation letter you have to do this by ensuring you get it from some of your lecturers that knows you very well that can write good about you that can write so well so good so fascinating about you the recommendation letter helps the admission committee to sort through potential candidates to find the best it can also give them the uh, very good insights into your resume and other application then uh, also your personality your academic performance interaction with uh, professors and fellow students are also things that could be gotten from your reference letter don't forget the admission committee has not worked with you they're only seeing the document the essay the transcripts that you presented to them and having somebody that can write about you that can describe some scenes and scenarios some interactions with him and with other people your fellow students would in a way correlate your document with them with what the professor professor is saying so it will give them a better insight into your personality candidature and your application this is a very very important part of your application from whom should you get recommendation letter don't forget ask your lecturers or professors for your recommendation letter particularly a professor or a lecturer that supervised your project because he would know you in and out he can he can explain talk about you beyond the uh, beyond the academic context so and that is what the admission committee really really wants so you can also get recommendation from your professional affiliations so, so your boss that you have worked with and all those they can write well about you professionally a number a, a, a total number of two to three recommendations are mostly required for most uh, application statement of purpose and personal statement so that this is another very important part graduate school application requires you to write one or more essays during the application process the statement of purpose 
and the personal statement they are both types of written documents that are often required as part of graduate school or scholarship application these two essays serves different purposes please don't forget personal statement statement of purpose there are two different uh, documents they serve different purposes the context is different the length is different all this you would learn from this video while an sop provides information about the applicant's academic background research interests and career goals a personal statement gives insights into the applicant's personal background character experiences and motivations for pursuing the program or scholarship an sop is usually in a professional usually written so meaning an sop you write it in a professional and uh, objective tone while your personal statement is very very personal and uh, written in introspective tone it has to talk more about to dish into you your personality your traits and all sop is a longer document in length say about 500 to 1000 words while your personal statement can be from 200 to 500 words so a well composed statement of purpose or personal statement for the department you intend to join is one of the important parts of the application document these are very very compulsory parts of your application document to graduate school whether you are vying for scholarship position or no scholarship or you want to pay for your fund your school it they are very 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 important part of the application process the next document we'll talk about is the academic cv what is academic cv an academic cv is can be described as all of you that is your the encyclopedia of you in the context of academic it has to point on things like your education your research interest the publications your experience if you have internship or volunteer experience if you attended conference you have been invited for talks lectures in the context of academics or even award you have to state all this so please your academic cv is not compulsory you have all this but please what whichever one you have among all these points you have to you know craft it out very very reasonably so a guide on writing statement of purpose a statement of purpose is otherwise called personal statement it is an integral part of a graduate school application process sop allows you to tell your story the best way you can to the admission committee so this should be strongly backed with by adding a lot of experience a lot of things that are you that are part of you that are personal to you in line with your academic your research experience and so on then the length of your statement of purpose can be from 500 to 1000 words some schools will st stipulate the number of words they want so and take note you have to write it with a very legible 12 points space double spacing with good margin and you have to justify your text so the steps in writing a very good statement of purpose are as indicated below you have to ruminate ruminate motivate and gather your ideas all these ideas that you are gathering and ruminating over they are things that describes you and you you don't copy and paste points into your statement of purpose don't put points that are foreign or alien to you please this is not good enough so you have to answer some of these uh, points why do you want this degree what are your expectations for this degree then what courses or program features excite you the most amongst amidst or among of among all the programs offered by that very institution you have to convincingly state which program or research area interests you and why so where, where do you want this degree to take you to both professionally academically in the nearest future then and how would your unique experience and all add to the program of the school so from there you have to develop your outline as listed below your introduction 
the body then you have to conclude and uh, go straight to how you are going to draft or write your first draft statement of purpose so and having drafted you also have to write edit and most importantly it will make a whole lot of sense for you to have somebody that would review some of these documents for you so i have been doing this for free for a very long time for students and god willing it has been a successful exercise another part or another document is your standardized test kudos most schools are now waiving some of these tests so it has made ap application so interesting and uh, lovely so in order to improve your chances of getting a fully funded scholarship with stipends and all so some graduate school require some of these standardized tests such as uh, graduate record examination gre toefl as test of english as foreign language duolingo for usa and so on don't forget different countries have a particular test that they prefer so you have to check through the school website see the required testing or scholarship test that is required before you hit the application button so however the school may decide to waive this test as i said earlier most schools are now waiving some of these tests but having it might also have a way of boosting your chance or chances of getting a fully funded scholarship so a scholarship test is a uh, very very cool or critical for your candidature some of the things that the test will also do or an another way that you can craft out your test is take for example you are a fresh graduate or you have a very weak gpa from your school due to one reasons or the other having all these tests gre your iets can with a very good score can convince the admission committee that wow this will make a very good candidate in graduate school so you can use it to cover up some of your weakness probably you have no research experience no work experience you don't even know the contents of your recommendation letter you have not volunteered before no publication having a very good score in your uh, graduate school or scholarship test can be a very good uh, boost all i'm saying here is all these application documents are very very germane and key they work pari passu so you, if you are weak in one then you can boost up your application strength with the other so you will have to know which area you are strong which area you are weak then you correlate them appropriately so you can prepare for the exams depending on who you are depending on your strengths your you know you can prepare for the exams within three to four months and obtain a very high score which brightens your chances of getting a scholarship award don't forget before you go for the test make sure you find out the school website if any test is required for a scholarship or otherwise please check the school website write out the eligibility requirement this should guide you before you decide whether to write the scholarship test or not however having a good uh, test score will brighten your chance even if the school does not require just feel like you just want to have it no problem it's still a plus to you so i have also dealt with when you have to take the scholarship test so when your cgpa is below average when it is low or you are a polytechnic student you are feeling you are just having the feel that will your hnd grant you school is fully funded scholarship for masters or phd well it's your feelings we have had uh, people several numbers that with their hnd they got fully funded scholarship to phd so please take note of that so if you also have plans to move from undergraduate school to graduate school with uh, no experience as some of those reasons behind then the next is to look at some of uh, the templates that will guide you in writing or preparing some of these documents so academic cv 
so i have to ensure my screen moves slowly so that you can understand all these parts academic cv a typical example is here your name and your address are the first thing that you would put there after name and your address your email address your contact address your phone number very crucial your research interest always ensure to have up to three to five research interest listed in your cv research interest is the f area or the focus area where you can have your research that's research interest research focus then your school you have your phd which you do graduated your msc bsc so and if you have a uh, just it's uh, one maybe you just finish your undergrad school your hnd your bsc it's cool the research interest the sorry research experience has to be listed if you have any honors and award you had them teaching experience publications if you have any have you attended conferences where, where and uh, what's the title of the conference do you have any professional development training have you attended workshop seminar professional affiliations professional service or community service you have to add them in that order references particularly the email the address of the reference so there is a sample recommendation letter you can see this is the sample that i drafted name my name my address the links to some of my publications that's if you have any it's not compulsory it's only what you have that you would had research interest i have defined some research interests here manufacturing engineering industrial and production engineering mechanic me uh, mechanical design and so on education masters the school the year the grade the title of the thesis the supervisor undergraduate the school the year the credits that is the cgpa the title of my thesis then the supervisor that's advisor research advisor then uh, research experience you also need to list specific experience that you gained from some of these undergraduate or postgraduate research so i am trying to say here that msc these are the experience that i had as graduate school anything after your first degree is graduate school as i call it graduate school scholarship so we are talking about masters and phd scholarship or postdoc scholarship so this is the school this is the year that i had the research then the title of the research the supervisor and is a level that is his position then these are the research experience i perform design of experience i perform dry turning on on center lates. i made use of mini tab software perform surface softness tests using style soft and so on you have to specify if it is one or two research experience that you gained or garnered please try to indicate it the research assistance that is my position so here these are the experience i gained design and setup of manuscripts and so on teaching do you have any honors and award you i listed some here teaching experience you have to tell us do you have any teaching experience your teaching experience can range from class tutorials you have instructed or taught a class of five a class of ten maybe a group of ten tutorial in a particular course indicate it they all form your teaching experience teaching experience starts from you teaching a group of three four five six seven define the number that you have taught define or uh, state categorically what you have taught them or instructed them this forms your teaching experience so list the courses that you have taught some of you are very good you have done tutorials in about three four five courses some are even regular please don't ever say you don't have a such experience you really do indicate them if you have publication 
you list your publication in order you attended conferences you published chapter published textbooks you have to state them professional development experience list what you have is what you list don't try to impress the admission committee then the reference can be listed like this the name the academic level is a professor a phd then the affiliates the institution is referred to as affiliate of the of your reference that's the name of the institution or company where it works the phone number the email address then the relationship is it your academic advice i mentor so you should have academic mentor then your supervisor is it uh, undergraduate supervisor hnd supervisor ms uh, bs supervisor undergraduate supervisor that's the relationship so we list them in order then we move to the sample or template of another document which is code email so here is a sample code email a code email is sent I haven't checked the school website you've seen the professor with a similar with a research interest with yours you can mail the professor and uh, request if uh, you show your interest in working with such a professor so here is a sample dear professor so, so and so i am interested in your adverts for a phd position in mechanical engineering in the computational mechanics laboratory so that's the laboratory where the professor uh, is working uh, where the advertised advertisement was placed i recently completed my degree in mechanical engineering and this so and you talk about a brief about your about your degree maybe your class of degree particularly if you have a very good degree you can uh, state it categorically if your degree is of average or low you can silence about it and what you have that is strong is what you would say so you would al always have something that is very strong so you have to you know in a way show off those very strong points of yours you can silence on others or you can just be transparent and definitely bring out uh, all what you have accordingly do not formulate or lie in profiling or writing your document so the thesis was selected as the best research work in the department i achieved efficiency it achieved efficient shelling with a uh, very negligible crushing blah 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 talk briefly about the project then the master's thesis to talk briefly about it the experience i gained from the master's uh, uh, research so with all this i am confident that my research skill the python uh, programming knowledge in investigative qualities just state some of the key qualities that you think uh you know conv that are convincing state them put them ahead and uh, capitalize on that and you will send the email attach your transcripts attach your academic cv then you send to the professor another one is here interested in the msc position at computational lab so you state your bsc degree what department then you are interested in joining the lab for so so and so so you have a bachelor of technology degree in this so and this is the thesis that you did and uh, you know you describe the thesis in brief and some of the things if you have published or unpublished if the thesis is still under review for publication you state it if it has been prepared to manuscript or unpublished you can also state it so it's always interesting if you have a if you have publication but however however you can still you know list the level of uh, the research so i have also garnered significant significant professional research experience so that is talking about the person's uh, you know the work experience that's the professional experience the number of experience what you do at in your place of work and uh, all those these are strong points you have to put forward just check into your back check into your past see what you have that is strong put them forward and uh, send to the professor attach your documents your transcript academic cv and so on so dear dr hooks that's the concluding part i saw your some of your research publication very good you also need to tell the prof that you have read some of his publication and uh, you can 
talk about a particular publication that interests you and that shows how meticulous and how uh, uh, keen you are to work with the professor and how curious and how researchful you are. So you look forward to the, for the opportunity to discuss your position with the professor. So please find the attachment to my CV and transcript. So sample SOP. So you can see. Let me just roll through the screen slowly so that you can read and see how some of the points resonate with your life experience, academic experience. You don't need to copy and paste. Just use this as motivation. Just use it to motivate to be able to, you know, write something fantastic for yourself. So, see. So, sorry, this is out of the screen. So, this is a sample SOP, the statement of purpose. This is another sample. I'm trying to scroll so that you can read through, digest, use it to form the basis for your writing. So we have personal statements as well. Personal statements as described above. It's usually introspective, it talks more about you, your life experience, your personal experience, more of you are not professional. The tone is usually very personal. The length is usually 200 to 500 words. And some schools or some application will tell you the content, how they want to, the content they want you to include or consider. So I hope you enjoy this. Here is another sample of code email, a template code email for a student and HND graduate now enjoying the fully funded scholarship. Here is a template of uh, the code email that uh, granted him the scholarship. Dear professor, I am Dash and uh, that's a basic introduction. Then the student has expressed his uh, interest in joining uh, the graduate school for the program and the level and for the academic uh, session is also stated that's for fall so stating his uh, grade his cgpa and uh, the school from which he graduated from the project he had worked on and some of his experience particularly when it comes to research so after the research and the graduates from his national diploma he also expresses uh, some of his experience and areas heat transfer thermodynamics energy it may be very necessary for you to state all this because this can reshape interests from different faculty members so it will define if the professor you are even writing to does not have fund, then another faculty member can be interested in you. So you can see. So stating that the above has fueled this interest in pursuing a PhD in that uh, very field that resonates well the, with the professor's field in which is emailing. So he said he would be glad in joining the research group as a research student with uh, financial support through the privilege of a graduate assistantship. So you can see, stating his research focus, stating some of his past experience after the post NYC experience. He stated that in the in the fourth paragraph.
technical skills from SolidWorks to MATLAB to Python, server security and cloud computing. Please state some of these skills of yours that you, are, that you have and try as much as possible to indicate the level. Are you a starter? How are you a professional? Are you a beginner? Just try to be direct. Don't say you are a professional when you are just a starter. Please, all this have a way of uh, affecting your application. Let him know, the professor knows your level. Don't add ginger to yourself. Just be straightforward, be direct, and let them assess you the, the way you are. Here is another important uh, document. However, not mentioned above, but it is a very very crucial document don't forget you might have a reason to waive the graduate score that uh, they you are required or you are interested in them waiving jerry for you so here is a template of such uh, that's jerry waiver template a request for jerry waiver so i'm writing to request a jerry waiver in order to proceed with my application for this. I have to state the stronghold, what are the strong things that you could use to you know, make them convincingly wish fit for you. Especially if you have a very strong CGPA and you have some experience, please you have to leverage on all those. Here is a sample of such documents. These documents are not meant to be copied and pasted. They are just templates to guide you, just a guide. The last here that we'll talk about is your what? Your application fee waiver. This is another very important document. As we know, you might not be able to uh, afford appli the application fee, or you may not be able to afford more than one or two, and you may wish to apply for up to maybe four or five applications or six to boost your chances. Some institutions upon receiving the fee waiver it's possible you get a, a waiver of the application fee. fact, some would ask you to request if you really deem or feel you are eligible to get a fee waiver justify that with a written document to re for request here is a sample of such can see request for application fee waiver i am writing to request for an application fee waiver to submit my application for so and so the level of degree the university you state your name your degree and the interest the research interest in which uh, you want to focus your inability to pay what why why are you not able to pay just state it in brief is because of your family financial status and uh, even you justify by saying you are from academically inclined family and you struggled academically with your siblings so upon granting you this uh, application fee waiver what do you intend to do with it so i am optimistic that my dream of becoming a professor of physics will further be enhanced with this application if it's this request is uh, so granted so this is the prayer so and i hope you found this very useful for you Thank you for watching this video and I want to believe you enjoyed all what you see from the screen sharing. Once again, don't copy and paste any content on this video. Try to use this content that you have seen on the screen to prepare your own essay. Don't forget to hit the subscription button. Please hit, hit it now.